What is going on guys? I'm Alvin here and welcome back to episode 4 of Rex to Riches AFC IX. Today we are going to be facing FC Groningen in the LDVC and we'll be hosting Angus in our 6th Europa League league phase match. FC Groningen, they are currently underperforming this season. If you look at the initial media prediction, right, they were supposed to be finishing in the 4th place. But right now, they are sitting in the 7th place. You know, when you look at their recent form as well, they have only won 2 games in the last 5. But they have won 2 games in a row. So this could actually be a tricky game for us here today, you know. Okay, so when you look at their key player, right, their key player is actually a 30 years old regen called Joshua Opong. Okay, so yeah, I mean, I, as I told you guys, you know, in our first episode, you know, of this series, okay, I just loaded this, uh, these leagues and everything, you know, five season back. I think it was five season back, right? Yeah, five season back. And that is the reason why there will be some players that we might not be able to see their full career stats, okay? So as you guys know, you know when when a, when when a league is not playable, you know, um, you know when you when when you start a series, right? This is what will happen. You know the what what football managers do will will do is that basically they will just uh yeah they will just simulate everything and it won't even show you guys. As you guys know, you know if if the team is not if the league is not playable, right? It won't even show you the the league table if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so that could be one of the reason and yeah that is one of the reason why. We can't really see these guys play stats. Okay, so he is actually their left winger. And to be honest, right, he's really not that bad of a player. But, you know, when you compare him to Jonathan Davies, obviously Jonathan Davies is, uh, sorry, is Jonathan Diaz. What am I doing? Okay, so when you compare him to Jonathan Diaz, right, although, although you know, uh, Joshua Opong, he's better in terms of the defending skill, his defending skill and his attacking ability. But Jonathan Diaz, our Mexican Messi, is a better player overall. Okay, so yeah, I think this could be a very, like I said, a very tricky affair. And at the same time, it's going to be quite interesting as well to see how our team is actually going to fare up against this team. And our second opponent, Angus, they are currently sitting at the top of league. Uh, when you look at this, you know, PSG is only one point behind that. But I really hope that Angus will be able to win league uh, here this season. Because when you look at the past winner, it has all been PSG. Okay, so yeah, you know, PSG, oh my god, their manager is Pep Guardiola. They still have Kylian Mbappe, you know, who's 32 years old and still a world beater, guys. Oh my god. Have they have they won a Champions League before this? Have they won? No, they have not won a Champions League. What are you doing, Pep? You should be winning a Champions League with this team. Maybe the only good player that they actually have in their team is Kylian Mbappe, you know. I I I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe if we are going to, you know, face them in the future or anything like that, we will have a look at them. But right now, the focus is on Angus. Okay, so uh, by, by the way, guys, you know, before I continue, is it Angus or Angus? Okay, I'm really not sure, you know, what to call this team. Do let me know in the comment, you know, if you guys are from France or if you guys know how to pronounce this team's name. Okay, so the key player is actually Albert Fotso. It's also a regen, 23 years old, French player. And they signed him from FC Nantes for a measly 7.25 million. This season, he's not really that playing, you know, not really playing that well for them. But he's a centre back, you know, for so 6.96 average rating in League R, right? It's actually quite great. But when you look at his attribute, he's amazing. Look at his mental ability and his physic, his technical ability, guys. You know, his tackling, his positioning, his composure, determination. I'm gonna scout this player. I I know I'm not gonna be able to afford him because of the value. But yeah, it's gonna be quite nice, you know, to keep him in the short list. Who knows, right? Maybe in the future, in the future, if we have that kind of money. We could actually sign him okay so by the way let's have a look at their formation that they love to play pochettino play 4-4-2 with this team okay i'm not gonna judge him seriously but yeah i really hope that we are gonna be able to beat them today all right guys, so when you look at the rdvc league table here right now we are behind fire note in second place but we are eight points behind them <laughs> seriously okay um you know after the last episode right we have actually lost one game and we lost that to i'm not sure how am i gonna pronounce this team's name but we lost 1-0 to this team. D. Graf Sharp, I think. I think it's the D. D. Graf Sharp. Yeah. Okay, so we actually lost 1-0 to them. And to be honest, I really don't know how we lost against them, you know. But we actually played a whole, you know, a fully rotated team against them. But yeah, seriously, our team should have done better. Okay, so when, when you look at this, you know, after last episode, right, we have played a lot of games. You know, starting from the game against, uh, you know, Vitesse. And we were actually, we did not concede a single goal for five games in a row. Four games in LDVC and one game in Europa League. Oh my God, seriously. This 
this seriously we are actually playing well no i know you know you guys must be thinking you know we are eight points behind you no know, fire note and all we are actually playing playing well we are winning games but the problem is fire note is winning games and you know recently they actually drew against bt say you know nil nil and they are still unbeaten so i really hope you know by the way when you look at uh, groningen's you know next schedule right after they play us today they are going to be playing fire note so i really hope that they are going to give us you know a edge here and really beat them you know i really need them to get beaten you know if they start slipping up right and if we continue our winning winning you know winning form right i think we are going to be able to catch up to them you know there's another I, i'm not not really too worried right now because there's still another 19 more games to play until the end of the season but if they don't start losing that is going to be a problem so in the europa league league phase right we are currently sitting in the third place we have not lost a single game you know if you look at this you know five wins out of five which is amazing we have only conceded two goals scored 17 goals and we have 15 points with a with a goal difference of 15 you know so things are going really well for us and i really believe you know that we are going to be able to finish in the top 8 you know this season which will straight away get us into the round of 16 and we will be able to avoid you know playing in the knockout playoff round i don't want more games you know for this team okay so yeah i i mean things are really going well for us seriously but the only problem the only thorn in our way you know of winning was this loss against fire you know we lost you know 1 nil to them at the start of the season which was embarrassing to be honest you know yeah i actually tried something as you guys know you know i i did not play a 4 3 formation i play i basically play a 4 3 3 you could say but with two defensive midfielder and one central midfielder and did not work and since then i've changed our tactic to 4 3 3 and yeah we're actually playing well but yeah you know we really need i really hope that some team you know in rdvc are going to be capable of beating fire no hopefully in today's episode i really need them to drop point All right guys so this is the team that I'm going to be fielding against FC Groningen here. It's going to be Murik Ingo, our four defenders are going to be Renford Brothers, Valentin Gomez, Mauricio Mora and Devin Ranch. Andre Santos will be behind Gabriel Vega and Kenneth Teller as our three midfield. Jonathan Diaz, Santi will be behind Danny Juan Luin as our striker up front. Let's just submit the team and get into the match. By the way guys, if you want me to look at any team, you know, or, or look up any players that you really like to see, you know, maybe you guys would like to see, you know, the progress of your of your favorite team or maybe of your favorite player and everything to see where they are currently playing are they even good or maybe any youngsters that you that you know you know from your favorite team you guys want to see how they have actually turned up you know because as you guys know you know basically uh yeah this season uh basically this series has been going on for the past 7 to 8 seasons right now okay so yeah there is high chances that the youth that the youngsters the youth players from your from, from your favorite club could be actually you know in a different club could be having different types of career so if you guys would like to see you know do let me know in the comment i yeah i will try to do my best you know to to show you guys around maybe in the next episode or the next time you know i yeah i record the episode okay all right so yeah do let me know by the way we have a corner kick here in the 9 minute gabri vega is going to be taking that corner kick headed clear by their defender gabri vega with the possession again he got tackled and Oh, he was offside. Okay, yeah, he was offside. I thought it was going to be a free kick for us. All right, guys, it's going to be a throw in here for us. Devin Ranch throwing it towards Kenneth Taylor. Now, Andre Santos is actually having a booking. You know what? Oh my God, we have scored a goal. By the way, you know, let me let me just ask Andre Santos. You know, to ease off tackle. I don't want him to get sent off. By the way, Danny have actually give us a lead, but there's a suspicion of an offside, and the goal has been disallowed. So Danny have not give us a lead in this game. Okay, it is the twenty-five minutes, and seriously, yeah, I'm not saying that you know things are not great for us, but things are not that great either, you know. Seriously, and with that, the first half is going to end with a scoreline nil-nil. Seriously, we have six shots on target, you know. Oh my god, I really hope that we are not going to miss Simon Zosberg, you know, playing as our striker. Oh my god, when he got injured right in our last game, I was really worried. You know, I was really worried. I will be honest to you guys. I was really worried because Danny Van Luyen, right? I know he he started the season with an injury and all, and he have actually been struggling. I know he have actually scored. If I'm not mistaken, he have scored a total of you know six goals, you know, in all of the competition. But there are some games that he just go missing. Simon Sosberg is a different type of player. When he doesn't play well, when ah uh, sorry, when he doesn't score goals, right? 
he always ended up you know creating chances having assists you know here and there so yeah it doesn't really show that you know he's not doing anything but danny when he doesn't score goals he doesn't play well at all so that is the only thing that is worrying me you know as i told you guys you know in the last episode i'm going to give him chance until the january transfer window if he doesn't improve and if i feel like you know he's not going to be good enough for us i'm going to sell him off i'm going to sell him off and i'm going to try to find a striker that can actually compete with simon sosberg okay guys he's going to be opong with a free kick we have looked at him just now hopefully he's not going to turn provider and tunis i think i think it is tunis or tunis he almost got a goal there you know for fc groningen and they until now you know it's the 65 minute right they don't have a shot on target and we have eight shot on target Danny Juan Lewin is injured. You know what? I'm going to bring in Rasmussen. I think Rasmussen can actually play as a pressing forward. Should I? You know what? No, I'm not going to play him as a pressing forward. He will be our advanced forward. Okay. All right. So let's have a look at this. You know, Valentin Gomez is not playing well as well. So I am going to bring in Renan for him. Okay. So Gabri Vega, he's actually a. Yeah, that is a little bit shocking that he's not playing well because when you look at him, right, after he came back from his injury, he have been scoring goals for us, you know, creating a lot of chances. Playing as a Mazala on attack, right, have really suited him. But yeah, in this game, not playing well at all. So I'm going to bring in, I know it's going to be a little bit of a controversial change, but I'm going to bring in Eden Makutungu. You know, he actually have capability of scoring goals, you know, creating chances. Uh, seven goal contribution in 12 appearances in all of the competition is amazing for a 19 years old midfielder. So I, I'm going to be bringing in. He will be playing as our box-to-box -box midfielder and Kenneth Taylor will be going up front, you know, playing as a Mazala on attack. I'm going to confirm the change. We have done three subs. What? Uh, I will have to do it again, guys. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, 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 no. I'm bringing Rasmussen, you know, for Danny. He's going to be our, okay, advance forward, Gabri Vega. Take him off for Maku Tungu. And how, how did Renan's... Uh, Seriously, how did Renan's, uh, you know, sub actually got confirmed, but Maku Tungu and Rasmussen did not. You know what? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna question it. Confirm the changes, and I'm gonna demand more here. Okay, it's gonna be a corner kick here for Groningen. If they score from here, right? We can't even defend the corner. You know, I know it was a, I, I know it was an off target header, right? But we should be winning the header seriously, guys. Seriously, there's another 15 more minutes. You know what? I'm going attacking. Yeah, I'm going attacking. Yeah, Rasmussen now with a free kick. Is he going to be playing it short? Don't tell me he's going to try it from there. Oh my God. I was wrong. <laughs> I was seriously going to be so angry that he was actually going to try it from there. But look at that curve. Top corner. No chance for the keeper. And I'm going back to positive. Okay. <laughs> I'm going back to positive. Oh my god, a lot of our players are actually tired. I'm going to take off Santi. He's not playing well. He's tired. I'm bringing in She She Lacey for him. Let's have a look at who we can actually bring in. You know, they can actually play well for us. Now, Danny Ranch, uh, Devin Ranch, let's bring in Ruel Walters for him. Okay, there's another seven more minutes left of regular time. Can we hold on to this lead? FC Grodiger don't have a single shot on target in this match. I really, I'm going to be so livid if they actually score an equalizer, you know, with their first shot on target. I'll be super livid, guys. I really hope that won't happen. But, yeah, you know, I'm actually worried about that. <laughs> okay. Now, Walters playing it to Kenneth Ellis. Now, Shea Lacey in the penalty box. He took a shot. Coming off the bench, scoring his second goal of the season. My, oh my. I should have started him just now, right? But, you know, it is nev it is better, you know, late than sorry. Okay. We brought him in, we subbed him on, and he has scored a goal that is going to be basically, you know, confirming our win here. You know, 88 minute here right now, and I'm finally calm. We are going to get the three point again, FC Groningen, and I really hope in their next match, they will beat Feyenoord. And with that, we have won 2 0 against, you know, FC Groningen. To be honest, this was not an easy game, you know. As you guys know, you know, we, we created a lot of chances, but we did not score. But yeah, eventually we did, you know, thanks to the. Free kick by Kristen Rasmussen. You know, seriously, you know what? I'm going to watch it again. That was an amazing free kick, doesn't it? Oh my god. It was amazing. Alright guys, so basically, Simon Salzburg is out for the next three weeks. And now Danny Van Lewin. 
he's out for the next three to six weeks, guys. Things are really not going well for us. Okay, we still managed to get a win, you know, against FC Groningen just now, which is amazing. But now we don't have a striker. I think I'm going to be playing, I'm going to be starting Christian Rasmussen as our striker in our next game. All right, guys, so for our next game, right, I, I know I told you guys that I'm going to be coming in back for the game against Angus. Okay, so what am I going to do is, I'm going to play this game against Willem 2 off camera and I'll see you guys in a bit. Do not go anywhere, guys. Alright guys, so we are going to have a throw in here in the ninth minute of the match. It's going to be Mauricio Mora with the possession, passing it towards Rex Deerwood. Devin Ranch playing it back towards Mora again. Mora, what is he going to do? He's going to play it all the way back to Murik. Okay, Yearwood with the possession. Two brothers, Ranford brothers with the possession. Now Diaz, back to Andre Santos. Santos. Okay, we are in the midfield. Gabri Vega with the possession. Getting past his marker in the penalty box. He took a shot off. Again, it actually went over the bar. Seriously, he should have done better with the chance. All right, guys, it's going to be a free kick here. Rasmussen playing it to Santi. Oh my god, he was totally unmarked in the penalty box. Awful defending by Angus. And we are in the lead here. 20 minutes in. IX1, Angus nil. Look at that. Seriously, he was totally unmarked there. But that was an amazing dink, you know, by Rasmussen. He saw that Santi was unmarked. You know, yeah, he dinked it. Amazing control by Santi. And even an amazing finish, you know. The keeper should have done better, you know, because that ball actually went in through the near post. Yeah, he should have been covering that position. Now, Chan Bosdogan. Chan Bosdogan with a free kick for Angus. Oh my god, looking for Fort So there. Seriously, that was a good chance by Angus, you know. Lucky for us that Muri actually managed to save it. But we are not out of it yet. They have a corner kick here, and in the near post, Muri collects the ball easily. He actually made it look very easy, you know, but actually, to be honest, that was a hard, hard save there. Okay, Yearwood now playing it to his brothers on the left-hand side. He's trying to look for Rasmussen, but it's intercepted by Angus defender. Now, Wally playing it to Fotso. Fotso, we actually looked at him just now, you know, at the start of the episode. You know, he is actually their key player, but he caused that goal. <laughs> I was just about to compliment him, you know, telling that he was a good player. But ended up, he's the one that actually, yeah, he, he he's the reason. He lost the possession easily like that. What was that? My goodness. Rasmussen actually intercepted the pass. He passed it to Santi. He was on goal, you know, totally unmarked. No one near him. He took his time and he has scored his second goal of this game. Okay, now Mendes with the possession. Playing it back to Fotso. Fotso lumping the ball forward to Luka Schwezis, I think. David got into the penalty box, but that was an awful shot by him at the end. You know, he should have at least, you know, tried to control the ball and then take a shot from there. That, that first time shot was awful. And the first half scoreline is going to be 2-0 to us. If you look at this, right, we have not been creating a lot of chances, you know. Only three shots on target. We don't have a lot of possession as well. But our finishing has been really good here today, you know. And Rasmussen have already have two assists in this game. You know, as you guys you know, you know, Danny Van Lewin is injured right now. You know, Simon Sosberg is injured. So he is currently our third choice. You know, uh, as as normally, right? I normally play him as a backup right winger. But, you know, since with the injury, injury to Danny and Simon Sosberg, he is the best striker that we have in the team. And yeah, to be honest, you know, he's actually playing quite well now. Borja Linus have clawed one goal back there for Angus. Seriously, I, I, I really hope this is not going to be the change in momentum of the game. This is not looking good, to be honest. You know? And yeah, where was our left back? Where was Renford Brothers? These are the type of play that you should be marking in the penalty box. He really did a mistake there. Alright guys, so the highlight is going to start with us winning the possession from Angus. Now, Mora with the possession. What is he going to do from the back? Playing it to Devin Ranch on the right-hand side to Santi with the possession in there, in the midfield. Playing a pass to Luis, uh, sorry, not Luis Diaz, sorry. It is Jonathan Diaz. That is not Luis Diaz, by the way. You know, we can't afford Luis Diaz, obviously. But Cannon have already scored his second goal in this season. By the way, right, guys, I tell you, Cannon, right, I'm actually playing him as a box-to-box -box midfielder, okay? So, yeah, when you look at his attribute, right, he, he, he can actually play box-to-box -box midfielder. But when you look at his uh when you look at his attributes and all, there's actually quite a lot of eleven and twelve. 
But on the field, right, he's actually doing really, really well. When you look at this, eight assists and one goal. By the way, you know, he have already scored his second goal. So basically, he actually have 10 goal contribution, you know, this season from the box-to-box -box midfielder role, which is amazing. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, he's actually doing quite well. No, he's, he, he is our captain, as you guys know. And this guy have actually spent his all of his career, you know, yeah, in in Ajax. He, he was basically, you know, the you know the product of their youth academy and yeah he's playing so well that is an amazing career that this boy is having all right guys mora with the possession playing it back to murik yearwood passing it to gabri vega vega to renford on the left hand side nodding in on towards jonathan diaz not luis diaz by the way it's jonathan diaz he found santi in the far post but yeah the header was so nearly in you know basically you know, it actually hit the crossbar, went out, and now the possession is with Angus. The highlight is going to end. Okay, guys, it's going to be a free kick for Rasmus. And as you guys know, you know, when we played, uh, who did we play just now? When we played Groringen, right, he actually scored a free kick from an even further position. But at this time, he could not do it. You know, normally, you know, when you least expect it, really, right, when you least expect it, that's when your play will actually score. But yeah, he did not do that. Okay, so I need to make some sub here. By the way, you know, Santi is actually playing really well. Two goals he scored. He's on the verge of scoring a hat-trick, but he is tired. So I can't really take the risk. I will have to take him off for Shea Lacy. Okay, so Redford Brothers is actually on a booking. I'm going to bring in Kazim Chan for him. I'm just going to make the two subs here. Confirm the sub. We are going to play on. Our team is actually playing well. You know? So the only reason I'm actually making these subs is because, uh, you know, because of the booking that, you know, um, the Redford Brothers actually had. And yeah. Santi was actually tired, so yeah, that was the reason. Okay, Gabri Vega with the possession to Yearwood. Yearwood playing it to Kenneth Taylor. Back to Mora. What can he do with the possession? He's just dribbling into the midfield, passing it to Shea Lacey. Now, Kenneth Taylor with the possession again for us, passing it to Kazim Shan on the left-hand side. He found Jonathan Diaz in the penalty box. Can he find Rasmussen? He actually managed to find Rasmussen, but that was an amazing saved by Angus goalkeeper there okay guys that's another 10 more minutes left you know what i'm gonna make something our players are really tired you know by the way seriously <laughs> they are super tired okay so i'm gonna take off you know gabri vega for yasin ayari and let's see you know andre santos is tired. let's bring in ray naga okay so yeah i'm gonna make um, i'm just gonna keep one sub in case of injury any injury as you guys know, know we are actually having a lot of injuries you know so yeah i just don't want to take any risk Okay, guys i'm not sure what happened there <laughs> okay there was just i really thought that there was going to be a highlight there or something and fm you know basically they just changed their mind at the last minute i guess rasmussen now with a corner kick he found mora in the near post unfortunately he just could not score from there okay guys kazim chan to yasin ayari lumping the ball forward trying to look for shea lacy headed clear by angus defender but we still have the possession lacy <gasps> that was a good shot by him you know and with that, we have actually beat Angus with the scoreline 3-1. That was an amazing performance. When you look at the match stat, right, we really control the game. Amazing performance by the team, guys. All right, guys, if you've enjoyed the video, please drop a like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.